welcome to Chatting with Sarahina, a show about women, by women, for women. My name is Sarahina Mayoyo and I'm your host. So I've heard a lot of people talk about this, that the reason why that famous Ephesians marriage scripture, love and submit, the reason why women were not told to love was because women love naturally. And it does make sense because how do you allow another human being to invade your body for nine months and not be able to love naturally? Love is about caring for someone without expecting anything in return. What that quote is talking about is saying that love is more about caring about people without expecting anything in return. My co-host and I are going to delve deeper in this conversation, so stay tuned. Hello, my friend, Hi, and welcome friend. to the show again. Now, I know you, but please, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Um, introduce yourself, give us your name. Yes, thank you very much again, my friend, for inviting me. My name is Matze Ronjumbuka, and I am a mother, I am a daughter, I am a friend, and I'm a guest, Yeah. You know, part of the furniture on, on the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, I mean. And I'm looking forward to actually um, going deeper into serious issues today's that topic women, eh? yeah and today we're talking about a lovely topic for women okay. like women must actually get their coffees ready and rusks because we are going to have fun we're talking about falling in love oh and this ooh, is something we grew up ooh, with right yes. I, uh, I mean the the bedtime stories mm -hmm. that we were told were about prince charming coming to save a damsel in distress Listen. so like falling in love for us is a dream that we have from you know, preteens. Oh, yes, you and know? The, I mean, in the m material and the content that we're exposed to on TV talks about you know that happy love. endings and falling in exactly. love and all of that. But now, in this falling in love, perhaps let me start here. Okay, why is it called falling in love? Uh, isn't it because it really ever happens gradually? It just happens. Yeah, doesn't it? Maybe that's the reason why they call it falling. Falling. Yeah, because like you kind of like fall into it without realizing. Okay. That is one way of looking at it, okay. and which makes sense as well. Okay. Um, and, and I think I, I, I'll take that mm -hmm. and then continue and go further to say, should we be falling in love then? So, so perhaps the butterflies and all of that, is that what? Infatuation? It's infatuation. Um, and apparently it's chemicals. Yeah. It's chemistry um, between it's chemistry people. And it's, it's like there's a, the scientific uh, explanations to it. Okay. And that's what, you that's know, that whole process is. Yeah. But then talking about love, love. Mm -hmm. What is love? And perhaps then is love something we fall into? Because I'm trying to think, if I were to get up now and walk away on these high heels and fall there, that's not that's something not nice. Cute. That's, that's not something I'd want, you know, for experience. myself. Like, True. can I not fall ever again? Mm. So now when I try and piece that with love, mm. falling in love, for me, falling has a negative connotation yes, to it. it but then you bring love does. into it. It's a bit tricky for me. And, and, and I think, you know, the, the, the point that you brought in terms of perhaps we need to look at what love is. Mm. Because mm. maybe it's, it's then easy to fall into infatuation. Yes. yes to fall into chemistry. Yes. To fall into, you know, being attracted mm -hmm, to a person. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, then when we mm -hmm, come to the mm -hmm. aspect of love, perhaps this, this concept that says, falling in love is a myth mm. or maybe should not exist mm. because you I, I don't think something as powerful as, as love. love is something that you should take as something you can make a mistake about yeah and can you imagine over the like and i speak as someone who has fallen <laughs> in love in their life yeah i'm gonna act like i don't know you <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you know how easy it is. I think I, first of all, I'm a lover of love. <laughs> yeah. Of whatever it is that we perceive as love. Sure. Ne? But I who isn't? I mean, I completely uh, Prince Charming, Demelin Prince Distress. You know, I completely, completely am a believer of yeah. falling in love. Mm. You know? But now that you put it that way, I'm sitting here and I'm like, wait a minute. Now it doesn't sound mm. so, so romantic anymore. Yeah. You know? And considering the end result of the many yeah, times that I have fallen in whatever we call it yes whatever <laughs> it is that we call yeah. it yeah now i also want to look though at 
perhaps then if we talk about love, let's leave infatuation now and mm -hmm. the chemical chemistry stuff. Let's come to love now. And before we even go to defining okay. what real love is, perhaps we need to talk about who should be the first recipient of our love. Mm. Who should that love be directed to? Mm -hmm. Because I think whenever we think love, we think outward. Yes. Whenever we think love, we think a partner. Whenever we think love, we think a you know a child. Mm -hmm. Whenever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. perhaps we need to look at that as well. Luguti. Okay. So who 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 should be the first recipient of this love? Not infatuation. Of love. Not chemistry. Let me tell you. I uh, I know for a fact that I love my kids. Yeah. I know like that I can never mistake for anything other than what it actually is. Mm. And of a fact when I think about my children, I think about how I would kill someone who tries to hurt them. <gasps> right there. What 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 defines that what defines it for you that you love your kids and you can be s like so so, so passionate and so, so resolved sure. in it, yeah. For instance, the feeling that, oh, the love that I have for my children. Yeah. I know for a fact that's love. Like, yeah. that's a feeling, that's an, an unwavering feeling, a feeling I'm sure of. And it, for me, it's mostly as, uh, um, the need to protect them. Yeah. And the need to make sure that they are well taken care of and all of that. Yeah. That's a feeling that I can't necessarily compare to the love that I have for my partner. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And as a result, that's why I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I know for a fact this is love. Because I could never unlove them. And, 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 you know, y because you were saying that, you know for a fact that, that love you love your children. Yes, yes. And it, it comes from that feeling from when you feeling first exactly. saw Where them. And I want that feeling because... You want to know what it is. I want you to express that feeling because I have a question for that feeling. You sure. know, what was that feeling that you felt when you saw your kids? It was uh, joy. Okay. It was joy on my part. It was joy. It was, it, it was a fulfillment. Okay. And the funny thing is... You think well, you'd look at this person and you feel like, oh my God, I feel complete because they are here. Mm -hmm. But then the uh, second one comes and you're like, oh, you know, there's I'm another complete again, uh, again, <laughs> another completion and another one. Okay. You know? So like it's, it's, uh, and I always say like whenever I'm, uh, whenever I meet one of my kids, I always feel like this is the first, uh, I, now I have an understanding of how God loves me. That unconditional love where there's nothing you can do yeah. that can make me unlove Whereas you. Whereas this side, there's sometimes where I really don't like you. Yes, and I, can, you know, I, I can tell you to get. I can tell you to get, mm -hmm. you know, but I know there is a love that's there as well. Now, can I probe? Okay. Can I go to the, to the kids? Because you're saying it's that feeling. Yeah. And how sure are you that that was not infatuation? Because, because it's it's been you constant. felt it. Okay. It's been constant. It's okay. never wavered. Even when... Excuse me, when my my child tried to jump over a, a, a window and I was mad at him, yeah, because I was like, "You are going to hurt yourself." Okay, never did I love him any less. So that's what makes you sure that this is real love. This is love, love. Mm -hmm. Is 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 that it? it it's constant and nothing. And it's consistent. Nothing. It doesn't. It ever doesn't depend on the children. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's just there. It's just there. It doesn't depend on what they do, what they don't do. Okay. I I, I want to challenge. I want to challenge this course, notion. Yeah. I want to challenge this notion. So we have to go to a break. So after the break, we're going to actually come with the challenge. Stay tuned. I want to encourage every woman to own their story, and when I say own their story, I mean everything: the good, the ugly, the bad, also the stretch marks, the glow and everything in between. So let's chat on chatting with Sarahina. This show is about connecting you to your journey to validate your walk. Also, what it's about is a non-judgmental space where women can come together and speak about their issues. It also is for every woman. And when I say every woman, I mean all of us. So join us so that we can listen to each other's stories and actually help one another. Welcome back and you're still watching Chatting with Sarahina. So before the break, we were talking about the difference in this love that we're talking about. Falling in love. Do we really fall in love? And also the, you know, the chemical stuff that happens in our bodies when we are in love and all of that. And the differences, Uguti, what is real love then if what we feel in our bodies is infatuation, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think I, I wanted to go to a point you made earlier where you say you are sure sure that what you feel for your kids is love 
and it's it, it speaks to what happened to you when you first saw them you know the feeling that mm -hmm. you got mm -hmm. the completeness that you felt about your children mm -hmm. and i want to go to that word complete yeah Uguti, when your kids came in they made you feel complete yeah and what is that about and what you know what does that speak to in terms of love loving them and you personally because it came and completed you I actually, I can't explain it. Yeah. I can't explain it. Maybe a professional like yourself can explain it to me because it's it's literally a feeling that I'd never felt before. Okay. That's why, for uh, and maybe yeah, I, I, I would say it's love because that's what we were taught. Mm -hmm. That when you see your kids, you end up loving them. But it is truly a feeling I'd never experienced before. And uh, um, it, 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 uh, uh, it, it was a feeling that, w that gave me comfort. Okay. You know? And... Um, sometimes it is scary because I, I, I look at them and I feel yeah, there'll come a time when you really disappoint me. Like you do things in your teenage yeah. years that are going to make me question even your existence. But I know for a fact that I won't stop loving you. Okay. So I think then there's something else you said earlier about fulfillment. Yeah. That it gave you fulfillment. Yeah. And I think, you know, giving birth as well, it, it, it speaks to purpose, yeah. you know, because yeah. we are life givers as women. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, I it's something that we can't, we can't run away from. So I think that that feeling that you felt when you saw your kids had a lot to do with purpose. And that's why it felt like com completing you. Okay. Because you say that there was a fulfillment. Mm, mm. And fulfillment comes when you actually fulfill your purpose. Sure. You know, when you do something that is your purpose. For me, purpose is speaking healing to people. Mm. When I see people heal after I've done, you know, what I'm sent to do to them, I get a sense of fulfillment mm -hmm. and a completeness. Mm. So I think it spoke to purpose with you. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to, to love. And now talk about love, love, mm. you know, and how love is not a feeling, okay. you know. Um, when we started the show, we spoke about how a woman would allow another human being to invade mm. them, mm. you know, carry a baby. That's not a nice feeling. You know, we go through the, 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 the most, pain. actually, mm -hmm. when yeah, we are pregnant. pregnant. You know, there are pains, you are uncomfortable, mm. you hate your body. So there are no feelings of love, mm, exactly. but there's love. Mm. Do, do you understand what I I'm saying? Understand. There are I no understand. feelings of love because, I'll make an example of me. My child was huge. I remember. So everything was just wrong with <laughs> because then she's, you know, stretching me and all of that. So, and then I couldn't sleep. I always had to sleep as if I'm praying mm. on my knees. So, in terms of feelings, there was it nothing was that felt mm. so nice and, and, and warm. Mm. But I knew Just that there was, a, there was something about this human being that is so connected to me. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's more than a feeling. It's like a principle mm. that this person depends on me. Their existence is, a I it depends on me. They are making it in life. Mm. It depends on me because I'm their entry mm. into the world. Mm. And I think I want us to go there as women because I think we, we misinterpret love okay. for infatuation, for feelings. And that's why we get ourselves falling in love and then get heartbreaks. Okay. We enter into love as infatuation, but we forget that the, the guy also enters into this relationship through time. infatuation mm -hmm. as well. So they've seen you, how you look, and it made them feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. Now, within the relationship, you know, infatuation can't carry us anymore mm. because now we are so used to each other. Mm. Like, you know, my husband's uh, crooked legs that I used to like, they annoy They're me so now. They're not so cute anymore. They're not so cute anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, his deep voice now is not so exhilarating anymore. Mm -hmm. It actually annoys me sometimes. Mm -hmm what then carries us through mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. all those things that made the infatuation are are gone so before you even continue with that there's no such thing as love at first sight okay wow you're bringing I'm another asking. spanner now I'm oh asking, are you asking it because it, it would mean it's infatuation at first sight because what are you loving you don't really w know what are you what are exactly. you loving if you're exactly. loving at first sight what w what's the first thing that you see I exterior exactly which is not the person yeah so y you can't fall in love with the person that you don't know mm -hmm. and you're falling in love with a casing mm -hmm. the outs you know the external mm. of a person so i don't believe in love it love at first sight mm -hmm. i think 
love is 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 something that builds mm. i believe that it builds you know um because you you get into a relationship you learn things that really irk you Just about people mm -hmm. you know friendships Uh, uh, colleagues, employees, all of these things. You learn things that just rub you the wrong way about people. What informs your decision to keep at it, staying there? You know, mm. married 14, you know, 14 years, 20 years, 30 years. Why are those people still together? Because, you know, the things that they saw when they started are no longer there. there. Mm. You know, uh, there's now a bit of weight You know, things are just not the same. And you see this person without makeup at night. You see them yawn. You hear them burp. And so, <laughs> so now, what, what, does, what does the relationship ride on? Mm. And that's the love I want us to, to, to open up and explore. Because then I want to challenge women. I want to challenge women to actually start looking at love for themselves. Kay. Because that's what it brings us to. It brings us to... Before you even fall in love with another person, let's use the term loosely. Let's use this falling in love term. Have you fallen in love with yourself? Mm. Wow. Have you actually explored love for of yourself, yourself and for yourself before you start giving it to somebody else? Mm. And also, I think if we can start there, we'll be able to love people properly. Yes. Yes. Because remember, you've got flaws too. Mm. So mm. as you love yourself, you realize that, oh, love means acceptance mm. of my own blemishes, which means it means acceptance for of my blemish husband's blemishes. blemishes. Right? How, how, how does that go with you now? That, that, that is deep. That is deep. And it actually makes me look at, 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 at love differently. Yeah. It is something that I've, I've always understood, though, I must say. It's something that I've always understood. And I think... I think for me, that's why I was saying it was easy for me to fall in love before. Yeah. Because I always understood that the person would have to fall in love with who I am as well. And I knew I was no... We're near knowing even who you are. Exactly. All right. So now we're going to go into that love, love, mm -hmm. and then find solutions as to how we can actually move away from infatuation as women and actually go into real love. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And before the break, we were talking about now um, going deeper into the love, love, the real love part of things, not the infatuation or the butterflies in the stomach. Yeah. A and for me, it's big for women because we fall in love with our emotions. Yeah. We fall in love with our feelings first. And then we start using our brain and thinking when we're like deep, Inside. you know, in, in, in relationships. But now, because we need to find solutions, You know, we, we can't just talk about what are we doing wrong without knowing how do we get out of it. Ne? Of And for me, I think whenever as women we find ourselves, you know, deviating from the way, because I think let's accept that as women we'll always not figure it out fully mm -hmm. because we are emotional beings. Our emotions will always play a part in this, That's you know. I it's what makes us us. It's what makes us us. So we'll away. never really get it you know, to the full. But as we try, you know, to go there, understanding that our emotions will play, when we find ourselves deviating, we have to have a center mm -hmm. that we look to, a place that we refer to to say that, okay, I can see myself, I'm deviating. What is love? Mm. What am I supposed to be mm. seeing in this mm. relationship mm. to actually say there's love here? And for me, I don't think we can ever talk about love in any setting and not mention God. Of course. Because God is oh. love. And love is God. Yeah. So we can never think w we'll speak and, and finish and fully understand love without, without understanding, understanding who love is. Yes. And, and, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on that oh, before I go on. That, that, is, that, is, that, that is powerful. Yeah. And um, in another episode, I mentioned how, for me, when I was going through my, my, my separation yeah. from, from the hubby, how that's when I discovered God's love for me. Mm -hmm. That's what, and I'd always thought I knew and I understood. Up until that very moment, I felt like, like you know, I felt like a child who had done something wrong yeah. to a parent. Yeah. And I was even afraid, afraid to face him. For a long time, I was afraid to face him. And mm. I was thinking, okay, uh, he, he's clearly not happy with my decision, but what can I do? Mm. And I remember 
the particular moment where Romans 8, at towards the end, where, where it, it, um, it asks, wh- what can separate what us okay. from the love of God? Mm-hmm. And I remember looking at, all, uh, at, that, at those verses and thinking, absolutely nothing can sure. separate me from the love of God. You know, not even what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm deciding to go into, not even nothing, nothing I ever do can separate me from the love of God. That's how much he loves me. That's deep. That was it for me. That's deep then because if it asks what can separate me from the love of God and then the answer is nothing, why do things separate us from the love that we proclaim or profess about people? Mm -hmm. If Mm -hmm. I profess and and claim to love my husband and stand in front of witnesses and, and say that, why then do things Separated. You know, why mm-hmm. are things separating me? Mm-hmm. Unless it wasn't real love. That's where it is. Could That's it be it then is. that some of us have gotten into relationships and marriages and we thought it was love and we discovered it wasn't? I think in more, more often than not, that's the case. But then some of us do think it was love, but it just didn't work. But can it but still be? Exactly. It can it still be love? If it was genuine love, though, like what are the chances that it won't work? Because apparently... Nothing, nothing can separate absolutely nothing, from nothing, love. Nothing, anything this person does should separate you from or, or should change the way you feel about them. And then it lists the things. This is where I want yes. us to go. It lists the yes. things. It says, uh, can famine. Mm-hmm. Now, my question is. <laughs> Are you excited? Can well? fi- <laughs> yes. <laughs> can financial difficulties separate me from my husband? Should si- financial sep- um, uh, difficulties separate you from your husband? Because, I mean, if my husband loses his job. And I'm the only one working and we're struggling. Can that separate me? If you love him, no. But then, I mean, it's a, it's a hot topic because some of us are leaving marriage and relationships because of financial problems. It all goes back to how or, or, or what actually brought you into that marriage in the first place. Because like we're saying, if it was not real love, then it's that easy for you to walk away from it. Um, can, 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 famine, can we list those things? Um, list, list, list. Can, can famine, can... Can demons, can angels, so good things and bad things, Mm -hmm. sins. And so can cheating separate me from the love of my husband? It probably shouldn't. And I think (laughs) it it goes back to what you were saying about (laughs) if you don't have Mm self-love, then it's easy for you not to be able to love the next person. Yeah. Because what that person does should not inform how you feel. Very controversial, (laughs) right? Very controversial, because though. It's, it's I it's hear what you're saying. You know, what they do should not change how you feel mm-hmm. about whether they are there or not. Whether it's if it I- if you Ooh. understand the self first, the self love, yeah. then you're able to love without condition. The problem is we come with a lot of conditions into love, into relationships, into relationships, and into also, in, uh, sorry, and also in, in, in uh, to talk about the love part. When when this person that I'm in love with. When they cheat on me or do something to me, does that mean they don't love me? Let's go there. He, this, this man cheats on me. To me, now this is not hypothetical. This has to be very real. What do I say? He doesn't love me anymore, mm. right? He doesn't love me anymore because he's cheated on me. Which speaks to when we enter relationships or when we enter love situations, why, what are we there for? Mm. Are we there mm. to receive love? Or are we there to give, give love? Give love. Goodness. Should what are we there for? Are we there to be the receivers only? Or, or are we there to be givers? Because here's the beauty. And, and I heard a pastor saying this at a, at a wedding. If both of you were to enter a marriage situation, and, and, and your goal, your main goal, each one of you is, I've give. come here to give love. To Guess give. what? you've actually come here to receive love. Mm. Because each one of you mm. have mm. resolved that, I'm here to give. Gandhi, the other person also has said, I'm here to give. Exactly. But if we come and say, I'm here to get love. Can we then go back to a situation that says, we're all on different journeys at different times? Obviously, most, most definitely. More, more often than not. Mm-hmm. Now, getting into a marriage or into any kind of relationship with someone who is on their personal journey, and hasn't gotten to a point where they understand that love is actually giving and not necessarily receiving. Okay. So, a- a- and, and, and then I want you to continue from there. Uh, say more. 
understanding that we're on different levels, yes. different journeys, different and levels. Yeah. And then perhaps you Me, understand. Me, I'm at that point where I'm like, okay, I'm here to just give love. Sure. Because I'm, I, I understand the, the love of God. And, and all so of this. And all of that. And, and the husband. The husband is not there. He what happens there? What should takes. happen there? Then he, he so what, what should, should, what should the woman do there? What should they do? Because I think for me, it's it, 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 it speaks to where, where am I looking? Uh, am I saying it with my mouth but not believing it with my heart that I'm here to give? Mm -hmm. Because if, 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 for instance, um, actually, when we started the show, we spoke about how love is about giving without expecting mm -hmm. to receive. Mm -hmm. So... I want to throw the spanner to say that shouldn't you then stay because you are a giver and you didn't come here to get. Is that for the rest of your life? I'm, I'm asking the question and I said, I did say I'm throwing yes, a spanner. Yes, no, so that's what a big should spanner. happen? That definitely is a big spanner. What should happen then? I mean, uh, um, we, we've said that a person, everyone is on their own journey and mm. they will get to a point where they understand what their purpose of is. Of course. In life. And even when they get to that point, maybe they will understand as well. That, you know, love is about giving. Mm. So you, the onus is on you. I mean, I, I, and especially when it comes to marriage. Marriage is understanding that each and every day you make a decision to love this person. Mm. Each, each and every single day you make that. Because at the end of the day, we're not God. Mm -hmm. We are human beings. So we need to go back to the center. Yeah. You know, go back and, 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 and take from the center and then give back. Mm -hmm. So we need to get to a point where, I mean, every day then you, you, you make the decision to love this person, to mm. love this person. But... They will get to that point. Yeah. It, it depends on your patience to wait for them to get to that point. Exactly. And I don't know how realistic that is. Exactly. But I, I do love, I mean, that point that you've just said now. to say Because what you're saying is that it's not a one size fits all. No, it's not. So we are all trying to figure it out, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But you're saying something very pertinent. Go back to the center. To the, center. the center that we spoke about earlier mm -hmm. to say to that God. it's your source. Mm -hmm. Find your source. And then you are able to go drink from the source mm. and then go back and, 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 you know, be real in whatever situation that you're in. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so much for those words of wisdom. Is it time already? It's always time already and we are never ready, oh yeah, you know, to end. But thank you time. so much for joining us yet again. It's always fun to have you. And thank yeah, you. we'll see you next time, I'm sure. So what is love? And for me, it's important for love to start with me because remember you can't give what you don't have you can't give people something that you can't give to yourself and i think for me this topic has actually taken me back to say when i say i love me when i'm able to say i love me what do i mean what am i talking about because then it would mean i'd have to remove this makeup and be able to see the blemishes on my face and still be able to say i love this if i love me when i look cute on instagram when i take the best side of my selfies then i haven't started loving because i don't even know what i'm loving also love is identity it means that i'm saying that i exude love as sarahina mayoyo i have so much love in me that i'm willing to give it to everybody else and i think every woman needs to start walking this journey where you are authentic to yourself you look yourself in the mirror and start walking the journey. Learn how to love yourself first and you'll be able to love other people with their blemishes too. Thank you so much for joining us today and we're looking forward to you being part of this conversation next time in our episode. Same time, same place. Goodbye. <laughs>